Hey there, Dengo Stu here. Today's video is about wiring the electrics in a small boat. I'm gonna be pushing on with the Green Machine project doing this restoration. You might notice on this to-do list I've now just rub the numbers off because the order is changing so often I don't think it was worth even trying to predict it. But next thing I'm going to do is the wiring. So I've got here a little bit of a plan of the backbone of how I want to have the wiring work. It's pretty straightforward so I'll show you what I'm, what I'm thinking. So in the starboard quarter I'm going to keep the battery here so it's nice and close to the motor for starting obviously. And then I'm going to run some 12 gauge wire from the battery up to the front. Now I'm going to put a 20 amp fuse straight away from the positive terminal to that wire. So if anything goes wrong along these wires, anywhere sort of chafes through, that, that'll blow straight away from the very start rather than melting the whole lot. I'm gonna come up to the front here and I'm going to stop at a two, two post sort of terminal block. The two post terminal block I'm gonna be using up there is one that just looks like this. The reason I'm using this is I think it keeps it simple and it keeps it reasonably versatile. All this really is doing is taking the two battery terminals, giving you a replication of those terminals up under the bow uh, on a fused circuit. So very straightforward. And I do like the idea of building these circuits as modules. So you can look at one and go, right, it's really easy to understand that power arrives at this point. Not really straightforward, you know, and then if it branches off, you can start to take each sort of branch in isolation. Things can be complex without being complicated, if you know what I mean. Each section can be simple and understandable and build on the next. And that's what stops you ending up with a big bird's nest of wires that you have no understanding of where they go and what they do. For the fuses, I'm just going to use these type of uh, inline fuses. So they take a blade fuse. So you probably can't see that with the glare, but they take a, a blade fuse and they um, have a reasonably waterproof housing for them. So I'll be using that. And then when I get up to the top here, to this two pin post, I'm gonna take the positive to uh, a bus bar and the negative to another bus bar. So the bus bars look like this, they're just sort of terminal blocks. So essentially you just connect power to one and then they're all just joined together so you can then run it off to as many devices as you've got ports on your bus bar. Once we get to that stage, then we're ready to start adding our devices, our nav lights, our radio, whatever we want to install. When I link my positive bus bar to the positive terminal of this two pin bar, I'm also going to put a second inline fuse there. The kind of deluxe way to do this really is to buy a bus bar unit like this that actually has separate circuits and you can put individually rated fuses in for each circuit. That's a really, really nice way to go. Uh, a little bit more expensive, obviously. But the way I'm going to go here is having a main fuse here, which I'm going to make a 20 amp fuse, which is the maximum rating of this 12 gauge wire. Then I'm going to have a 10 amp fuse feeding this bus bar, which will be sort of ultimately slightly larger than the total of all the devices I'm going to have hooked up to this. It doesn't give me individual circuit protection, but it just means that if any one of them shorts out, it'll blow that fuse and all the devices will die. But that's obviously not my uh, ignition to start the boat and my bilge pump. So your sort of critical systems are going to have separately. The first thing I'm going to do is make up the wires that go to the battery. Down the track I'll probably will put a battery switch in this. So I'm going to make this with a fair bit of slack. I might end up just coiling it and leaving it near the battery just to make sure if I do install a battery switch down the track I've got enough length to reach the switch wherever I position it. You can buy adapters for these terminal posts that transfer them to 8mm threaded posts but this battery's actually got both on it already so it's these 8mm threaded posts that I'm going to attach these lugs to so these lugs have a 8mm hole that goes over the post and they just have an open end like this which I'll be soldering into as per that plan I'm going to put a 20 amp fuse first thing after the positive terminal on the battery this is a slightly different style. I think it's actually a little bit more UV protected. So this is the one that's going to be outside. This is the one I'm going to use under the dash. So I'm actually going to attach my terminal 
straight to my fuse holder like this, then connect my fuse holder to the positive lead and then put a terminal on the negative lead. So I'll quickly solder that up and then we'll get up to the bow of the boat. Just going to use some wire strippers to strip back the ends of uh, the two wires coming out of the fuse holder. Then I'm going to put a bit of heat shrink tube over the end that's going to the battery. Doesn't matter which way around it goes, they're completely symmetrical. Putting a little bit of solder on the end of the, the tip. Which desperately needs cleaning. This uh, tip refresher is really cool stuff if you do a lot of soldering. I'm going to crimp this connector on and then solder afterwards. But to make the solder flow a bit better, I'm just going to tin the end of this wire first. So I'm just putting a little bit of solder on the tip to help heat conduct from the tip of the soldering iron to the, to the wire more readily. And then as that wire heats up, I'm just going to start feeding wire in from the far side and a capillary action will sort of draw the solder into it rather than just being a, a glob sitting on the top of cold wire. And you can see once the wire's hot enough, you can just brush the solder against the far side and it coats it quite nicely. So now that's been tinned, hopefully you can see. I'm going to put this connector on. So it's crimped on quite strongly now, but I'm just going to start feeding a bit of solder down into the connector as well. In this case the trick is just to get as much heat into the connector itself. A good way of doing this actually is with a little butane torch just straight onto the um, connector and then just feed the solder in. But unfortunately I left it in the boat. Now hopefully you can see that as well as being crimped that whole connector now is filled with solder. So I think it's going to be a pretty good connection. Final step, I'm just going to put this bit of heat shrink down. Just be careful with this heat shrink. This is still quite hot and often you can be positioning it and you'll start to shrink the heat shrink because of the, the sort of latent heat in the connector. So you'll see this one, which I've sort of managed to do, it's just started to shrink the end a little bit. So I'm going to use a razor blade, just cut that back to the thicker section, let this cool a little bit more and then put it on. Now the heat shrinks on the end here. Just going to use a heat gun to shrink it up. That's now my positive terminal done onto the fuse holder. So I'll go ahead and do the negative one, which is identical. And then I'll join this fuse holder to the positive wire. Now I'm going to connect this fuse assembly to the positive lead. We've now got a, a lug on the negative. But I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter so that one lead isn't hugely longer than the other. To join these two wires, I'm going to use one of these, which is a heat shrink with a low temperature solder inside and a bit of adhesive on each end. They're pretty good connectors. I think, you know, doing it by hand, soldering it by hand and putting heat shrink on is a better connection, but they're so quick and easy and they're probably 90% as good, so that's what I'm going with. All I need to do is just slip it down onto one end. I'm actually going to go past the connection so that I can then make a bit of effort to sort of mesh these wires together a little bit. A bit like sort of interleaving a deck of cards. And then push it back over. until the soldered section is centered on the two wire bits and then I'll just hit it with a heat gun.
With these, you have to spin them around a little bit to make sure the solder melts on both sides. And so now, we're good to go with our positive and negative battery leads. The battery is actually going to live down, down here by the transom, but I'm just leaving it up here to be a little bit easier to work on. And as I was saying before, I'm going to leave a bit of slack. So if I imagine the battery was here, say I had one loop just to give me a bit of scope for my battery switch. Then I'm going to run it up and along the gunnel and up under the bow. So I'm just going to measure this off to the place where I'm going to put that two post terminal connector and then I'm going to put two more lugs on the other end because they'll go on those two posts and then I'll start mounting that two post lug under the dash. This lead's finished now and it's going to give me a 20 amp protected circuit up to the bow. It's not going to be the only power running around this boat as you'll see as this sort of fit out goes on. But it is going to be the main power for all the accessories I add, independent of the motor. Next step is to find a good spot to mount this two pin post. So let's duck up under the bow and we'll see what we see. Just to orientate you, we're just sort of looking up here under the bow and we've got plenty of options with these deck beams that come across. So I think I'm going to mount them all along here. They're protected from the weather they're out of sight, but they're still reasonably accessible. So I'll mount the two post one here first, and then I'll run the wires to it. To mount this post, I'm just gonna go with a couple of stainless steel self-tappers. There's no real load on it, so I'm not so worried about uh, using a small bolt and a nut. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of Duralac on it just because it's stainless into, into aluminum. I've got all those terminal blocks uh, screwed in the front now, so I'll show you where we're up to. Here I've got the uh, battery end of that power cable I made. I've got our inline fuse. No fuse in at the moment, so I don't uh, short anything out while I'm working on it. But that's the plan. Then it's going to run up the boat here. And it's going to come in through the side here. And then once that cable comes up, it goes to our two pin. Then I've got the positive and the negative terminal blocks side by side there. The next thing I'm going to do is take a straight uh, negative or ground, come across to here, and then I'm going to put a positive through another fuse holder onto this one. The stage I've got to now is where we've got power coming in. Then I've got a fuse connector going to the positive terminal block, and then just a straight wire into the negative terminal block. So now we're ready to start adding devices to it. It wouldn't be much of a video if I didn't get at least one thing hooked up to this circuit before we uh, wrap up. So I'll just show you quickly. I've got a little sort of cabin light here. So this little cabin light's gonna be a nice easy one to do because it's got a built-in switch. It's got some wires coming out of the back, but they're very short. So I'm gonna run some extensions just to the positive and the negative, pop some fuses in those fuse holder and uh, should come on. This time I'm just using a short length of the twin core marine cable to make the extension. Now I've got the wire from the back of the light coming up here to the right hand side of the terminal block, so one wire to the positive, one wire to the negative. Now all I've got to do is uh, put a couple of fuses in. I've got two fuses here, this is the uh, 10 amp that I'm going to put under the dash now, and this one I'll put down the back of the boat. I think everything's ready to go now. Got the 20 amp fuse here. Got these lugs tightened off. Everything comes up here. Pop the 10 amp fuse under the dash. Yay! So not the grandest achievement in the world, but we've got the backbone in. And this is where I think just taking a little bit of extra time to set up that that infrastructure, that backbone of your electrical system means that getting one thing online takes a little bit longer, but getting the second, third, fourth thing online is going to be really, really quick and the circuit's going to be much neater. I might actually go back and shorten some of those wires to stop being so much excess wire under the dash. That'll keep it neater as well. Uh, Labelling is another great option. Just putting a tag on it so when you see a wire you go, 
I know that is my cabin light or whatever it is. So things like that, they, yeah, they're really an investment in the future. They take you a little bit longer up front, but can save you a whole lot of headache down the track. A couple other things you might be wondering about is sort of mechanical protection, a bit of conduit for that cable, and absolutely that'll be happening down the track. I'm gonna wait till I see how many cables I get running fore and aft, etc., before I choose a size of conduit and wrap it around the whole thing. So I definitely will be doing more mechanical protection, but I'm gonna do that last. Under the dash, I'll definitely be neatening the wires up with some cable ties. Uh, there's also certain cable ties you can get where they can screw into a, a surface and then group cables and, and, and tether them to a surface. So I'll be looking at something like that as well. But once again, this is stuff I'm gonna sort of be doing as we go. So I'll be going through the rest of this boat. We'll definitely be installing a lot more electrical devices into this boat and I'll show you how they fit into this system as, as the project sort of goes on. So thanks for watching. I'm not saying this is a real sort of gold standard install. I definitely think having one of those terminal blocks on the positive side only that has a fuse for each circuit probably is the best way to go, but I'm pretty happy with this. I've never really had a situation where I've been too concerned that if a device fails, I mean, all it's really gonna do is rob other devices of power or blow the fuse and turn every other device off. So as long as you're not in a situation where a little blow on your globe here suddenly is shut down on your navigation or whatever, you know, it really depends on your situation, how critical this sort of thing is. In my situation, I'm very comfortable knowing that the wiring's protected from melting by having those fuses in line. And if a fuse blows and I, I kind of lose my nav lights and my internal light at the same time, then I can live with that. All right, well, thanks again. I uh, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.